Hello viewers, welcome to our latest edition of Sandy Wars, our series on strategic and military affairs. Today we bring you a very very interesting discussion with a very esteemed panel on the hot military topic of the day, the disengagement between India and China in Eastern Ladakh. After nine rounds of core commander level talks, we finally have results. But what are the results all about? Today we have retired Major General Yash Moore, who till recently, till just over a year back, was the GOC commanding the Leh sub area in Eastern Ladakh. And we have Brigadier retired RJS Dhilon, a very esteemed para officer, who during his uh, various stints in Ladakh has covered on foot right from the Karakoram Pass downwards through the various sectors up to Galwan. So we go to them today to understand the meaning and impact of this, of this disengagement. So today our focus will be on the recent disengagement talks, the agreement which has been signed between the two sides at the core commander, the, the ninth core commander level meeting, the statements made by GOI and the uh, Minister of Defense after that in Parliament, and various other versions which has come regarding this latest development. So we would first start with uh, General Yashmore, sir, please. Thank you, Sandeep. It's always a pleasure to speak to you on uh, strategic affairs. I think this is the second time or third time you're talking of uh, Eastern Ladakh. Yes. See, as I see it, uh, if you remember last time, um, exactly this is what I was uh, recommending many, many months back. Even in my writings, I have been saying this, that let's discuss sector by sector. And finally, we have to come down to sector commanders, military to military only, then this issue can be resolved. So 10 months, it was a huge standoff. Uh, the troops spent the winter there on the in very, very inhospitable conditions. And perhaps this is the first time uh, two neighbors, two big armies, uh, tanks eyeball to eyeball. In, uh, in fact, tanks, uh, gun to tank gun, they were uh, standing 20 meters apart from each other, fully loaded. So this is something unprecedented. But I'm glad personally, as a soldier, and now you know, looking at it from a strategic uh, perspective, that uh, uh, very, very painstaking uh, negotiations between uh, Delhi and Beijing. And finally, we have an agreement. We have an agreement uh, which uh, uh, involves a disengagement uh, of both the sides which is in writing, it is being verified by both the sides, and it is a process, very, very deliberate process, uh, which will take some time uh, before it, uh, you know, uh, actually clears from North and South Bank. The takeaway from this is finally, the PLA and Indian Army are talking, and it will bring a lot of confidence <clears throat> between the commanders, you know, unit commanders, brigade commanders, and divisional commanders on both sides to be able to talk to each other and negotiate and see uh, the futility of this, uh, you know, Chinese ingress in the North Bank. And then, of course, Indian Army did a brilliant maneuver to, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, totally surprise them. So I am very positive uh, and happy that uh, it is late by about two, three months, but it is taking place. Uh, Brigadier Dillon, you have heard what uh, General Moore had to say. Uh, we would like your take on it, sir, before we proceed further. Yeah, I, I generally agree with uh, what he has said. You see, it's always better to jaw jaw than war war. And especially in the conditions in which we are, where the toll on not only the men, but the machines and the equipment would have been tremendous. And, and uh, there would have been that giant hole in our uh, defense expenditure or the defense budget, which, uh, to be very frank, we can't afford uh, anymore. So that's just fine. Uh, the basic thing what we have to keep in mind is that we sh should get out of the various uh, fables that we have, we tend to get into. You know, the thing of, uh, no, no, Chinese are a soft army. Uh, they, they are not a, a battle-hardened army. We got a battle-hardened army. Uh, our people can uh, uh, survive at heights and in uh, cold thing. It applies both ways. So that's what has to be kept in mind. And that's why he's brilliantly kept it uh, thing that they have been for so many months in real, real harsh conditions. The effects will be felt not only now, for a few years hence also. Effects in what sense, sir? Effects on a human uh, body, 
the troops which are deployed out there, some of them are going to be uh, definitely not up to full, uh, say, 100% in their performance, physical performance hereafter. Some of them will become categories. Some of them will be going low medical. Some will have some psychological problems. These are all par for the course. Uh, effects on the equipment and all are well known to uh, General Moore. Uh, at that temperature, uh, it plays uh, funny uh, things with the fluids. It plays funny things with the metal. It plays funny things with the, uh, the explosives, right? And the wear and tear of the deployment itself is going to uh, cost us quite a bit. OK, sir. Uh, now, uh, getting back to our specific questions, what exactly has happened sector-wise in this disengagement before we come to you know, the realm of speculation of who has said what? Let's look at what we actually know. What has happened on, let's say, Pangong, so North Bank, sir, because that has been discussed a lot. Please, okay. Sandeep, uh, what has happened is we are aware it started in April uh, last year. And uh, somehow, um, let's admit that uh, we were caught uh, by surprise. And uh, uh, we, we didn't have, we didn't anticipate that Chinese would do something like this. And uh, this aggression continued from figure eight to finger four. We are aware it's a perceptional issue. Uh, there is no real estate uh, which is being lost or which is being taken. It was perceptional issues. They felt the LSC runs along finger eight. We have always felt it runs along finger four. So we have been patrolling and there have been patrolling clashes in that area. But Chinese came in and dug down and, uh, you know, and then we had that unfortunate incident of 15 June where we lost a commanding officer and we lost 20 boys. Very sad and the kind of brutal hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, uh, uh, you know, street fighting that has taken place. It's, this is not soldiers don't fight like this. So that was a very bad, sad chapter for both the armies and, you know, uh, then uh, for a long time we were in a limbo and we, there was a psychological paralysis, I think. But then uh, this movement on 29th, 30th uh, August night, where we moved tanks and ICVs uh, and occupied South Bank, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Rechanla, Rezingla, you know, Magar Hill, Black, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, along the Spangur Gap. People call it Kalash Range, but actually it's not Kalash Range. So we went and occupied that and we were looking onto the Moldo garrison and Chinese were surprised. So this somehow uh, turned the tables and uh, we got back the initiative. And then uh, uh, from August, we thought October, November, uh, and I wrote a lot on the, you know, uh, the uh, traversity of sitting like this without construction bunkers and field defenses. There's no water, uh, huge issues. And then the talks were went on and on and on and on. And then, uh, you know, we were even ready for a winter skirmish. So that uh, now is over, thing of past. So initially the Chinese kept insisting, first you withdraw from uh, south of Pengong, so and then we will think of not. But I think we succeeded in, uh, you know, uh, pushing our stand that let's it be a simultaneous and status quo NT, status quo NT that we have been demanding, I think has been restored with minor you know, uh, a clause that nobody will patrol between this and this till some agreements can be reached. So that is where I think we are uh, as of today. Sir, I would just like to come in a little here with your indulgence. It's actually not status quo ante because status quo ante would mean this going back to a situation as it was. Before April, we were free to patrol up to our territory, which is our LSE on finger eight. We were free to patrol by land and by the lake. And uh, they were also free to intrude, which they had been doing up to finger fourth via the road which they constructed in 1999. Now we have come back to Dhyan Singh Tapa post, which is behind finger three. So we have, and we don't have permission to venture across finger three. Not only that, we have vacated heights on the finger three higher reaches. We have vacated our positions. And uh, I have, uh, you know, um, I have put, a, I have uh, satellite images with me since I wouldn't like to quote them. I wouldn't like to show them here because they are not from official Indian Army sources. So, you know, I don't think it'd be appropriate to show them here. That we have actually, we are 10 kilometers away from uh, finger four, whereas they are eight kilometers away from finger four when they have gone to Sirijap complex. 
that's number one number two in the south bank sir uh, kala top uh, helmet top they were sitting on it throughout the winter we were on the approaches uh, we had gurung hill uh, and we of course on the on the southern part of uh, the spangur gap magar uh, the magar hill uh, till you know um, rezangla and of course um, um, say, and of course rekin rekin ridge you know just across the lac uh, mukpari and all that the entire uh, length we had but what what did we achieve sir i mean uh, you see we have we have not been able to go up to finger eight uh we have in fact lost patrolling rights to finger 8 uh, beyond finger 3 and till now we don't know we 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 have heard today that saturday the next round of talks will start about other areas depsam and southward still gogra hot spring whatever so brigadier dilan do you think this is status quo ante no uh, it will be round call status quo ante and that's why the, uh, even uh, uh, all these statements from our side are very carefully worded right and uh, here basically what has happened is that in this particular segment okay we had to concede a, a a bit of ground in as much as that the area between finger 3 actually and it has become a vague area in in as much as that is not can't even be called no man's land but in no man's land the patrols of both sides operate whether it's in war or otherwise right take any of the conflicts uh, in our own area i remember 54 we 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 had a no man's land between uh, dial and uh, sun uh, uh, village and dogra uh, <coughs> up ahead till we finally captured it right in this case now what has happened is no patrols will be there right now as to when they will be resort we don't know and to my mind this is like a boxer he is been showing his movement along the pangong so his real interest is dipsang and area of galwan that is real area of interest this is not this is actually doesn't concern him that much that's what sir, my, my even, for, even for pangong so being behind finger 3 do you feel since they have pushed up their infra up to anela do you think we are in real danger of being outflanked if they come yes. down from anela any time any time any determined commander across who's gung ho who wants to do it he'll do a hook and he'll you'll lose all the fingers not only figure 3 <coughs> uh so so uh, general more i mean you know the the area like the back of your palm like we said if we go back to depsan the area which brigadier dilon is mentioning and which all of us are very concerned about you know the lie of the land right the logistics wise as things stand today uh see in south of pangong at least we were dominating the moldo camp and the spangur gap and at least that was a very good defensive posture we could have blocked them over there you know yeah. there was no way they could have come in through spangur gap but in depsang what do we have i mean uh, what what leverage do we have i think uh, uh could the negotiations have started and they have blocked us from patrolling points where we were traditionally uh, you know going so uh, our uh, you know in fact uh, everything boils down to our road network that is coming up in that area and our use of uh, you know dbo over the years and our, our you know uh, uh, china felt that we have certain designs in that area so be that it may be but uh, i think uh, by negotiating and by you know uh, putting across uh, our view point strongly i'm sure we will be able to go back to the patrolling points which we are doing earlier my point is that Uh, uh, you see, it's better to talk, and this is no way to manage an international border. Finally, some day, even if we start today, long-term vision for us is that we continue this and somehow delineate or mark the LAC. Armed forces, professional forces, don't have such borders anywhere else in the world, which are not marked, which are you know uh, skirmishes of this kind, and they can open up anywhere. so two mature nations uh, cannot be going in this manner so i feel if uh, this is what the assurance that has come 
uh, from our uh, you know uh, authoritative sources that uh, once this is resolved then we will go and discuss depth sum so let us wait uh, i'm sure we are uh, we have learned in this 10 months the art of negotiation and being firm where we need to be firm and for once i found uh, it was a very good uh, you know reciprocal or a kind of a handshaking and a, a joint effort between the mea and the mod uh, between the military and the diplomats so i'm sure uh, in national interest whatever decision uh, the people take and we have to trust our leadership uh, i keep saying we have to trust our leadership uh, on this issue and avoid zingoism and rhetoric i see this all the time and this really disheartens a soldier like us you know too much of this somebody says yes land is going somebody there nothing like that i think we are professional army and the army belongs to the nation and uh, whatever uh, decisions are taken they will always be taken in uh, national interest so the decisions will be taken by whom for if it is a military man now is it the military man's decision to uh, you know to escalate or not escalate to concede land or not to concede land is the military man's decision or the political leadership decision uh, see political leadership is there to support give guidance but uh, on the borders it is a military who know the ground and uh, we've been there for now uh, you know uh, 70 years and effectively very strongly since 19 the battle of 1962 and large amount of negotiations have taken place so my point is that this kind of arrangement on the lac long term we need some solution we need some marking you know by give and take by negotiating uh, i'm sure uh, uh, china has resolved it so many other nations why can't we resolve and again it has to be you can't do it across the entire lac so sector by sector at least let us put certain sectors uh, freeze the lac there and get back troops on both the sides and concentrate uh, you know on places where uh, there are you know um, um, bilateral issues which are uh, with both don't see eye to eye so if that means uh, giving up territory on the map will that be a military man's decision on the spot or no it will be a political leadership's decision if it involves or entails giving up territory on the map neither neither the power doesn't rest with them the constitution is very clear it's only the parliament of india which can give away or acquire territory the political leadership the government the army cannot do it it is a it is a it is a it is a bromide which is being fed to the indian public right we should be very clear about it so you have patrol from karakoram pass downwards up to galwan you know what we are talking about you know the uh, day for yesterday on a on a national television channel a uh, northern army commander had given uh, some statements some bites and there uh, the question was put to him uh, by a journalist that uh, you know so have we lost territory in in depsang what is all this about being blocked from patrolling points he appeared to say now i am not sure whether i heard it right he appeared to say that china has blocked us from uh, reaching up to our patrolling points and so have we blocked them we have blocked china from coming to their patrolling points now i was in fact a little taken apart i am not very sure i heard it right what do you th- what do you have to say about that sir i i heard that now i i think he has been very unfairly put up in the shooting gallery uh, by who has put him up uh, whether it's the government or who it is he's a fine soldier he's done a very good job right now he has worded his statement very carefully he started off with talking about the dipsang area then does a change and that reference of our blocking their patrols if you get back to him you will find that he he was talking about the fingers area not about dapsang at dapsang we have got no way that we can stop their patrols if they are sitting right now in the wide junction in the the rakinala is gone the uh, jeevanala is gone okay uh, from burse the hardly any distance that we can go ahead so where is the question of our blocking their patrols so what where is their patrolling point what are their so, patrolling point 
No, no, they don't have anything like patrolling point. The patrolling point is, is a is a is a, uh, a half up measure which we devised. Uh, basically, you see what had happened was after 62, the Chinese drew a line on our map and gave it to us and said, "This is the limit that your army will patrol when they withdrew." Okay, that line existed in all our maps in 3DEV, which was the uh, resident formation there at that time, and it was there. I have seen that till the 80s. This PP thing has come out in somewhere in the 90s. The PP were virtually on almost along the limit of army patrolling. The LSE was ahead of the PPs. Please remember that. Probably the one or two PPs would have been on the LSE, like which is actually not the LSE, which is actually the, the border. That is the Karakoram Pass. That's the only one which is not converted or controverted either by China or by us or even by Pakistan. That is one point which is firm, right? Okay, so this uh, thing of uh, their having PPs is a uh, no-brainer. It, it doesn't exist. The PPs are only in our side. Okay, sir. So, so having patrolled along that, uh, you know, line of, uh, the limit of army patrolling line, and which are known as uh, PPs after 1993, uh, yeah. you feel that, so not just Depsang, up to Galwan, you know, even at Galwan, you, you have Uncle 14. 14, for example. That's also behind the LSE, right? That is behind the LSE. That is behind the LSE, but on the limit of uh, army patrolling, uh, right? But yeah. it is definitely behind the LSE. 1.2 kilometers, I think, behind the LSE, right? Something like that. Something like that. So if we have created a buffer zone, that that word is now the, the flavor of the season, you know. If you have created a buffer zone, we have created inside our territory, right? You see, I, I, back... I, I think this is very wrong. As, as a professional, I mean, we shouldn't play around with words like that and, and use them as a smoke screen. The fact remains that this is area where they told us very clearly, you will not venture in. So the result today is that we are sitting on the Shok River and we are nowhere in the Galwan, right? So all this nonsense which is getting talked about in the Galwan Valley, we are doing this thing and that thing is all bum. All right? We are nowhere in Galwan Valley. There's not a single sword out there. We don't have the height, sir? No, we sir. Don't we don't. Have. We, we don't. Uh, unless, until unless the local uh, for, formation commander in the last uh, the seven, eight months has uh, put in defense works on the crest line just across the Shok. Straddling the Galwan. <coughs> okay, so you are saying along the estuary, right? Just across the estuary. Uh, aside the estuary, because you see, the estuary, estuary opens up. Behind that, it is a fairly narrow valley, right? Any force which has to be moved in can be very effectively interdicted en route on the line, right? Once it gets into the estuary, then thereafter it got the options of going down towards Shokshalu or going towards Sutanji school uh, and doing whatever it wants to do. So, 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 so General Moore, what is it that we can hope for in the next round, which is on Saturday? Uh, you know, we have been told that, uh, you know, finally uh, the Chinese side and our side will be discussing Debsan, uh, Gogra, Hot Spring, etc. What can we hope for from that meeting? Very, very, very realistic terms, given what leverage we have as of today. Uh, uh, in fact, we won't come to know much. Last nine core commanders talks also, uh, just few flyers came from here and there, people who had some access, they quoted some sources within the army, but we didn't know anything. And this agreement also took, uh, it was sometimes, I believe, uh, it took a month and a half to finally ratify from both the governments. and all. It's very painstaking kind of an effort. So I, I don't expect much out of this, but what I expect out of this is, at least this process that is started in North Bank and South Bank, this will further get consolidated. This pullback of mechanized elements, even, you know, this just the tanks and artillery is falling back, heavy equipment, infantry and special forces are still there on those posts. So that will be the next stage. So probably it is a confidence building measure between the two armies, this kind of acrimony, the kind of, you know, uh, uh, trust deficit, uh, which has been generated that for the first time, you know, uh, uh, so many meetings between the highest uh, military authorities on both sides. Otherwise, maximum uh, was 
maybe the GOC three day would be once in a while going, and we had very good relations going on till last year April. So confidence building is very important. Uh, I see this as a step towards uh, further coordination and further belief in each other. I I, I think that is maximum this can achieve. Uh, at this next you you mentioned meeting. that we should, by at all costs, avoid jingoism and and cheap talk. You know, on such an important issue. So in the other day, in the in in that in that same channel, we we saw a, a statement that uh, India is China on the run. Do you think that's detrimental to what's happening? This kind no, of no, that was very sad. I see these pictures on social media and channels just showing retreat. No, it's not a retreat. I'm telling you, we we do a lot of damage. Uh, or by this uh, zingoistic rhetoric, muscle flexing, TV studios. Uh, we have been doing it everywhere. It, uh, professional nations don't need to do this. In fact, uh, uh, I don't know if it's being encouraged by someone, but uh, this kind of a thing should be put down. Uh, I don't know what uh, the Chinese would be showing about us. We have no idea. So this one side of a thing, uh, you know, uh, it uh, it actually spoils the entire uh, atmosphere. We shouldn't be. I somehow don't like that kind. Of and it can spook uh, you can it can spook the other side if they hear the chinese on the run india put china on the run kind of a statement it can spook them right yeah. not only that to be very frank the genesis of this trouble which was visited on us is due to our jingoism it is due to our young officers and uh, commanders carrying allocing the lse you understand the point? See, in LOC, we have got used to being able to finger the Pakis as and when we want. So, uh, as far back as, say, 2005, uh, 2003, do you know that a company commander on the LOC could ask for one round of battery uh, field uh, artillery fire without reference to anybody, including CEO? These sort of things are not done. So we, we, we have got used to this sort of, sort of thing no? of uh, at times even uh, shelling their civilian areas, uh, killing their kind and other things, which is not done. But it, it, it tends to make a person puff up. It gives them a, a match of feeling. You know, oh, I, I've got them on the run. I've got the Pakis on the run. We transpose that thinking onto the LSE. The, to be very frank, the Chinese tolerated for some time. And then they decided, okay, enough is enough. And this is my take on it. Uh, well, uh, people may think otherwise. Okay, so so then can we agree uh, at the if, if we want to summarize now that uh, what has happened till now is a step uh, is a good step towards peace because uh, you know going on and on for a year through high winter and and high hell. And you know, to, to, to the detriment of our troops physically, to our equipment, to our budget, and all the rest of it, without achieve, achieving anything at all. I mean, it was not going anywhere. So at least we have taken a step now, but you have to manage it very well, right? Going ahead. Well, it is going to be a long grind. It is going to be a long grind. Uh, we will, uh, like in the coming thing, we will try to uh, discuss about Depsang. They'll tell us about Demchok. You know, that's sort all of thing. Uh, uh, a quid pro quo will carry on. Ultimately, to my mind, what the Chinese are going to enforce onto us is our acceptance of the 1959 line period. But that in cannot be done without, without, without parliament being taken into consideration. No, no, you see, that's what, that, that is where the government is on a cleft stick. That's where the government is on a cleft stick. Because we have got that uh, silly resolution passed by the House that we'll take back all our territory. It's something which, which just can't be done. So no, so the government is, is, is in a fix there because they cannot <laughs> accept 59 claim line officially, right? Officially they can't. So they, they will do this small screen of not an inch being lost and nothing being ceded. Well, obviously, ceding of territory can only be done by parliament. It can't be done by the government or it can't be done by the army. So General Moore, uh, my request is... Um, <laughs> As uh, you know, uh, as professionals who are not only true to their professions but also true to the country, I'm sure you all would be keeping a very keen eye on on what happens in the next few days and uh, next few weeks. And we'll again get back to you to this esteemed panel 
because this is in the national interest that people know what's happening from uh, from sources who are professional who know the land with the lie of the land who know the forces and who are committed to the country at the same time they don't have a political extra grind i th i think that's very important absolutely yeah? absolutely thank you thank you sir uh, thank you brigadier dilon um, uh, we, we had you on this uh, session for the last uh, 25 29 minutes for half an hour now and uh, we are we are really really appreciative of, of the effort and the time we have given thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir, sir.